Okay, so let's look at an anonymity enhancing cryptography. And in this presentation, we'll be look at the Kamensky Lysyanskaya signature. So first we'll look at uh, elliptic curves. So with elliptic curves, what we have is an equation such as y squared is equal to x cubed plus ax plus b. And with this, we end up with our curve, and then we take a point on the curve, that's called the generator, and then we will modify uh, the points so that they fit onto uh, the curve. So in this case, this is a simple case of creating a public key and a private key, where the private key is the gradient, uh, and the public key is the point at which uh, we cut the, pot, the elliptic curve again. So we normally have uh, various values for elliptic curves. So this is one example here. A is 0, B is 7, and we have a generator point, and then we have a p-value, which is our finite field. When we have these finite fields, uh, then uh, we will take the mod of a prime number. So this shows you what actually happens to the points when we actually plot them because of this wraparound uh, that we have within our cyclic field. So in the presentation we'll have a look at what's called uh, a pairing or a bilinear mapping. So with this, we have two cyclic groups. So as we've seen, those were our cyclic loops. We have two elliptic curves in this case, which both share a prime number n. And then we have a pairing. If we take the two and we multiply them, then we end up with some sort of function that will give us gt, where we have another elliptic curve mapping. And then, if we get the mapping correct, then we have what's called the bilinear mapping. So in this case, we can say that uh, this mapping E here, e of two points, and a V value here, V1, is equal to E of U1, V1 times E of U2, V2. Same thing happens here we can end up with this type of equation. But the mapping that we'll be looking at in this presentation is this one, where we have u to the power of a and v to the power of b. These are our two points that we have. That, through our mapping, is equal to the point u, v to the power of a, b. So the computation of this mapping e should be efficient in computation time. So in the CL signature method, what we have is we have a secret key, that's a random value x, a random value y, and for the number of messages that we have, we have a random z uh, value. zi will relate to the number of messages that we have. We then create a public key, which is our generator point on our bilinear uh, mapping of g to the power of x, y, is equal to g to the power of y, zi is equal to g to the power of uh, these zi values that we have, and wi is equal to y to the power of zi. This becomes our public key. Then we create a signature, and the signature is a, b, c, and then a list a, i, and b, i. For this, we'd create a random value to make sure that our signatures will always change, uh, even given the same messages. So we'll calculate a as g to the power of alpha, b is a to the power of y, and c is a to the power of x. We take our commitment, and our commitment is the multiplication of our zi values to the power of our messages. And we'll take the commitment to the power of alpha, times x times y. Our list ai becomes a to the power of zi, and b, our list bi, becomes ai to the power of y. So this is how we create our signature. And then, when we want to check the signature, 
we see that we look to see if the pairings are the same or equate. So those are the pairings that we have A and ZI, G and AI, a pairing of AY and a pair with GB, and so on. So we'll just try out these examples just to show that they should uh, work. So here's our little demonstrator that we have. So we'll just, we'll just generate a new value. I can see here, here's a public key X, Y and Z, W. And there is our sigma values, our signature A, B and C, and big A and big B. And in this case, our signatures are verified. Okay, so what we have is two elliptic curves. G1 and G2, and then they produce GT. And when we multiply these together with a with a with a, a function e here, uh, we end up being able to take a point here to the power of a, another point, and that will become equal to g to the power of a b. So this is the bilinear mapping that we get using these pairing, crypto pairings. So we start off with our secret key. A secret key is x, y, and then we have a number of messages, m. Let's see, we have s of them. So we have m, i, which we are signing for. So we end up with z, i, where i is equal to the number of messages that we, we have. That's our secret key. We then have a public key, call it SK, and that's PK. So with this, we end up with X, Y, ZI, and WI. X is equal to G to the power of X. Y is equal to G, a point on the elliptic curve for the pairing, equal to G to the power of Y. And ZI will be G to the power of ZI. Wi is y to the power of zi here. So this becomes our public key. When we now want to sign our messages, we then take an a, b, c, a, i, list, and b, i value. So that a becomes g to the power of alpha. So we need to make sure that every single time that we sign, even with the same messages, we get a different signature. So alpha is a new random value here. B is equal to A to the power of Y. C is equal to A to the power of X. Times a commitment and to the power of alpha X Y. Then A is equal to A to the power of ZI where the A value depends on the ZI value and the BI is equal to A I to the power of Y. So these become our signing values where we take our commitment. So if you read to the web page you'll be able to see how the commitment is actually made. So the pairings that we end up with are then A ZI is equal to G A I. So G is the generator for the mapping. So then if we take this, then we end up with G to the alpha, Z I is G to the power of Z I is equal to G and then A I becomes a to the power of Z I here. Now that's G to the power of alpha G to the Z I G and now we have A which is G to the power of alpha to the power of Z I that then becomes this Uh, 
because of the rules of logs, we end up with that. So because of this mapping here, we can then say that that is equal to that. Same here, e1 times that gives us that. So we have proven our first key pairing. So when we receive these values, the verifier will check to see that these pairings are correct. Yes. So for the next mapping, we have this. So that becomes G. So for A value due to the power of alpha and Y is G to the power of Y is equal to the pairing G and B. And then we'll try this one. <coughs> g to the power of alpha to the power of y and again we end up using this rule here and our pairing is the same Okay, so we go through four different stages. This one here checks for the A value, this one here checks for the B value, and then we go to the C value, and then we check that. Okay, so that should show roughly how we can create a key, how we can sign, and then how we can verify.